Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing something I've never reviewed on this channel before. Um, it is something I've talked about in several videos and shown me using, but I've never actually reviewed uh, any of the various options out there. And that is, of course, as you can tell from the title, Candle Dyes. And today, specifically, I'm going to be reviewing the new Eco Dyes from Wooden Wick Candle Company. Hi everyone, my name is Wade Thomas. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn. I also run this YouTube channel dedicated to helping others out there learn to make candles, run a candle business, and also follow along if you're interested in any reviews of various materials when it comes to candle making as well. If this is your first time here, I would encourage you to subscribe if you are interested in any of the content that I just spoke of. And if you are back here and a current subscriber, thank you for stopping by as always. You know I appreciate you all for being here. So I mentioned we're going to be talking about candle dyes today, but I have another video already that talks about using color or not to use color, and if you're going to use color, how to use color, and so on uh, on the channel. But today I'm going to be reviewing a set of new eco liquid candle dyes that were sent to me from Wooden Wick to review and kind of test out and see how I like. Well, let me first of all clarify and say something that's really, really important when we're talking about candle dye. There is a distinction, a difference between dyes that you can use for candles and wax products like wax melts versus dyes that you can use for bath and body products like soap. They are different materials, different types of dye, and they should not be intermingled or mixed at all. Uh, definitely keep that separate. So just keep that in mind. I know most of you probably are already aware of that, but I just wanted to clarify that, that the ones I'm reviewing today are meant for candles, melts, wax products. The other thing that I want to mention real quick is that there is a few different types of options when it comes to dyes. There are powders and pigments, there's micas. However, the one I'm gonna be reviewing today are liquid dyes. They are the type of dye that I prefer myself and use in my own candle lines. Many of you that have been following me for a while know that I sell both non-colored candles as well as colored candles. And my colored candle collection is quite elaborate and I use a lot of colors and I mix a lot of them together as well. I just think they look amazing. So I was very excited to test these out and see how well I like them. If you're interested more about the difference between liquid dyes, powder dyes, why I prefer these, definitely check out that other video. I'll put it in the description if I remember. <laughs> and also I'll link it up above. But let's talk about these specific dyes sent by Wooden Wick. Again, these are from Wooden Wick Company. They are called their new eco dyes. Now I'm gonna pull up on the phone and kind of scroll here to show you how to navigate to find them because they're not gonna be in a place that you would normally find them on a candle website. They don't have a section called dyes. Now again, I'm on a mobile device here, so it'll look a little bit different on a desktop for sure, but you're gonna do the shop now and find the main kind of shop uh, by creation section. Once you do that, you're gonna expand that, or again, on a desktop, it'll look a little bit different. And then you're gonna go down underneath candles, and then where you're gonna find the color dyes is actually under enhancers. And then you'll see the new eco dyes listed here. Now here are the dyes that we're gonna be reviewing today. Canary, marigold, scarlet, moss, violet, indigo, and ebony. Now the first thing I wanna say real quick is that I just really like the names of these. They're not your standard blue, red, black, orange, brown, purple, green, right? They had some fun with the names and I really like that. And I will say, that was pretty intriguing to me. I, I, it's, I know it's just a name and it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but it is interesting sometimes to see things put a little bit different than we're used to. So how am I reviewing these dyes today? And again, this is the first time I've ever reviewed dyes. So I'm going to break them into five categories that I'm always thinking about whenever I'm using dyes and how I initially settled on some of the dyes that I use today. Um, and I will talk about that in other future videos as well. The five categories that I'm gonna to use to rate these dyes today are richness, hue, ease of use, price, and then overall quality. I'll explain each one a little bit more as we get to that category. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at the colors in general, each one of them, and I'll show you what they look like uh, in actual product, in actual wax. And then at the very end, once we've seen all the colors, then I'll rank them in those categories. And then I'll give you my overall feedback on using these particular dyes. Starting with the violet, uh, which of course is their purple. This is an example of this here, and I'll be showing screenshots of the different candles so you can get different perspectives and get a better look because sometimes holding these up in the camera doesn't give you the clearest picture. Very nice looking color. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the indigo. This is also a really, really nice color. This is very similar to a current blue that I use, uh, but what I like about this is it's not a super faint light sky blue, nor is it a really rich royal blue. Uh, and we'll talk about these a little bit more as we get to talk about the hues here in just a minute. Next, we're gonna look at Canary. Canary is just their name of yellow. Again, a very, very true yellow. 
Yellow sometimes is not the truest color in some of the dyes I've used. And the same thing goes with orange. However, there isn't an orange in this candle line and that might be intentional. We'll talk about it here again in a minute. Next up is Scarlet. Now, Scarlet, I think was supposed to be their red or at least their version of a red. And you can see that it is kind of a magenta pinkish color here. That's very common for your red dyes. Uh, red and black dye specifically can take a lot of dye sometimes to get the color you're looking for. So I wasn't too shocked to see that this wasn't a true red out of the bottle. It's really, really hard to achieve unless you add a lot, but this is their scarlet and it is a gorgeous color on its own. It's just not necessarily red. Next up is black. As I just mentioned, it is going to look gray, of course, because I did not add a ton of drops, but I was impressed how dark of a gray this was with just two drops of black. And again, I'll talk about this more in a minute, but you're not gonna get a nice, deep, rich black color by just using one drop in any wax or any oil or any dye that you use. So this is pretty standard to see with the black. It's always gonna start off gray, and then it gets gradually darker the more you add. And then lastly is Marigold. Now this one is a little unique for me. Uh, this is kind of like a golden honey goldish color. Uh, I wasn't sure what this was gonna look like when I used it, uh, but it ended up looking pretty nice. It's almost like a tan and beige a little bit. Um, by the way, you just saw me sniff it. I went ahead and actually, I wasn't going to wick these at all. I was just going to pour a bunch of wax with the dyes in them and see what they look like. But I figured kill two birds with one stone here. I might as well add some fragrance as I'm going to be testing out some new oils with these candles as well. So stay tuned for that in another video. So those are the, those are what the colors look like, but let's talk about those categories and kind of break these down. First, let's talk about richness. Now, when I'm saying richness, when it comes to color, it's basically how rich or vibrant are the dyes without having to use a ton of dye. Um, and in each one of these jars, I only used one drop of dye with the exception of the scarlet and the black. I used two because you always need a little bit more of those to get, uh, to get the color you're after. Um, so it, by adding one drop of each to these jars, these hold about seven ounces of wax. So roughly two drops per pound is all I used. And these came out pretty rich. You can see this was one drop in this candle, which is basically two and a half drops per pound. That's a really good purple for just two drops per pound. Same thing with the blue, not overly light, especially with just two drops. Now on the black and the red, or the black and the scarlet, I used two drops in each one of these which ended up being about four to five drops per pound. That is still less than I would normally use for red or black for sure, but pretty good richness. And this, these are, this is a 50-50 soy wax blend, so it's not a pure paraffin blend. If this was all paraffin or all palm, you'd get a much richer color, period. But I like to use a 50-50 blend because it's kind of that nice even balance between paraffin and soy, and it kind of gives you an idea of what these colors might look and how they might perform in various waxes. I was overall pretty impressed with the richness of these dyes. I was a little concerned at first when I saw that these were called eco dyes because sometimes there's a step back when you're trying to be eco-friendly. There can be a step back in quality sometimes or step back in performance. That wasn't really the case in these. I thought these were nice, rich, vibrant colors, even without using much dye. Now, I would be curious and further test that if I did add eight drops per pound, maybe even up to 10 drops per pound, how dark and rich these colors would get. It is gonna vary by your type of wax, of course, but I was pleasantly surprised on the richness and vibrancy of these colors. So that's a good sign on a scale of one to five, five being the best, I would give this a four. I'm not gonna give it a five because I, I feel like there probably could be a little richer. It's hard to get a five on vibrancy because I feel like there's always gonna be something that can do a little bit better job. But a four out of five is really good, especially in a 50-50 blend, only using one or two drops, uh, or sorry, two to four drops per pound. I would give this a four out of five on richness. So good job there. Next up, I'm gonna talk about the hue. And by hue, I just mean the scale of colors provided by the supplier. Now, there was only seven total colors, which is the only reason I would kind of knock this down a touch because it would be nice if there were a few mother, more color options. For example, if there was an orange, that would be nice. And if there was a brown, that would be nice. Those are the two colors I felt was missing from this assortment. However, that being said, you can achieve almost any color you want by just mixing dyes together. So I'm not gonna knock it too much for not having every single color of the rainbow or the spectrum for that matter. But I would say I would still give this a four out of five on hue because out of the ones that are provided in this set of seven, they are really nice. The only one that I'm kind of unsure about is the Scarlet only because I wish it was more red. That being said, I kind of wish every red was more red with every candle dye out there. That's just the nature of it. Um, 
It's just a hard color to achieve without using a lot of dye, as I mentioned. So overall, the hue of the one scent I really did like, and they were interesting, so I'd give that a four. Oh, you know what? I totally missed one. I forgot one. The green one, they call it moss. And uh, this, again, was only the one drop. And here it looks like kind of a spearmint-ish color green, but I know that if you added more, it would get become a, a deeper green for sure. And green's one of my favorite colors, so, um, and I also love the name moss for the color. Uh, sorry, I forgot that one, I left it out. But uh, again, out of the assortment of seven dyes, I thought the, the seven hues that were sent were really, really nice, so no complaints there, other than I wish there was a brown and an orange added in as well. So again, another four out of five. Ease of use. This was the most difficult one for me to answer because, so at least for me, this assortment of one ounce bottles of dye, this is what they look like, by the way. I think you probably saw in some of the photos, but they did not come with standard droppers or any way to just maybe squeeze or screw on droppers, anything like that. They were sent with pipettes and you can just get the dye out with a pipette and use that. It works completely fine. No issues with doing that. The only problem for me potentially is how many of these are you gonna go through? Now, again, that's not a problem for me. I've got a thousand of these things laying around for other all sorts of reasons. But if you don't, that's another thing that you have to stock up because you're gonna go through them using the dyes. And the second part of that concern is how many times can you use these before you need to trash them? So that would be my only concern if you truly only receive these. However, if you can get droppers for these, screw on droppers or a different kind of cap with a spout, anything like that, then the ease of use on these would be just like everything else. It's a liquid dye, which I would probably give it a four out of five. Um, it's just the compli It's just the fact that you have to use a separate pipette is the only reason I'm gonna say, if that's the case, I would give this probably a two out of five. If you can get tops for these um, or screw on droppers for these, then I would give it a four out of five. So it's hard to answer that one because I'm not entirely sure, um, but it did come with these, so I, I don't know. I wasn't quite sure. I probably need to get some clarification on that. Next up, let's talk about price. Overall, I gave this a three out of five on price, so about average, I would say. Um, they are a little bit pricey compared to a lot of the other dyes that you might find out there. For example, Candle Science, Nature's Garden. There's a lot of other dyes out there that you can find that are a little bit lower price tag. For example, these one ounce bottles for most places are around four or five dollars and they were about 650, I think, from Wood and Wicko. Um, and then they sell the four ounce bottles for just under $20. Now, I know that sounds expensive for dyes, but also bear in mind that liquid dyes last a really long time. So that one bottle is gonna last you a long time. And I can tell you when I'm working on my own inventory and my own cost of goods and figuring out how to price my candles, the ratio of the cost that dyes make up for is so small. It's such a small part of the overall cost of the candle that that's why I don't consider that a significant factor. I wanted to bring the price up so you're aware, but I don't consider it a very important factor as long as it's reasonable. And I think anything, you know, from $5 for the small ones up to $20 for a larger one is fairly reasonable. A little bit higher than the industry standard, but again, that's not too uncommon when you're talking about products, especially ones that are eco-friendly products. So just wanted to make that, uh, make sure you understood that the price tag is a little bit higher, but it's not absurd. And so I'd still give that a three out of five, mostly because candle dyes last a long time. Lastly, I want to talk about overall quality. Now, if this isn't just an average of the previous scores. If I averaged out the previous scores, it would come to around a three and a half uh, out of five. However, I'm gonna give the overall quality on this like a four and a half. And the reason is, is because they are eco-friendly. If we open back up the Wooden Wick website, you'll see in the section about their eco dyes, they talk about these being eco-friendly. They are renewable solvent systems. They contain no parabens, no phthalates, and they list the Prop 65 ingredients. And they are also registered with REACH, that is R-E-A-C-H, which means that they maintain the requirements and standards in order to be considered eco-friendly for humans, animals, plant, the environment in general. So that is something to consider. And if you already make natural products, you like to use natural soy waxes, or any other organic waxes for that matter, or you're just in that market and you're trying to produce the most natural product possible, then these are an excellent choice. And that is one advantage I would say these dyes have over most your normal candle dyes is the emphasis on eco-friendliness. So combined with the fact that they're eco-friendly with very good hues and richness in their colors, I think that's a really good overall quality score. So again, I'd give it about a four and a half out of five. The only reason I don't give it a five 
really is the ease of use. If they came with their own droppers, their own screw-on caps, or some better way to use them, I think this, these would be a five out of five for sure, even with the slightly higher price tag. But still, overall, these are great dies. Um, if you haven't tried them before and you already purchased some of your products from Wooden Wick, whether it's vessels, waxes, wicks, I would encourage you to maybe get a sample of one or two of these and just try it out and see how well you like them. But I would encourage you to ask them about the droppers. Do they only come with pipettes? Do they sell anything that allows you to replace the cap? Because a lot of candle dies do come like this with they just a regular screw on cap, but they also provide a screw on dropper. That might be the case with wooden wick. I'm not sure, so just ask them that. And if they don't sell those directly, ask them what the dimensions are for the actual lid itself or the rim, and you might be able to find those elsewhere. I have used bottles like this before and bought droppers at another supplier, so it's quite possible, but I would just definitely encourage that. That's the only really knock I have on that is, is the ease of use, and that's really the only negative I have to say about these dies. Other than that, I thought they looked great. They performed really well. They're beautiful colors. And again, they're eco-friendly. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I would encourage you to check out the rest of the channel. I have a lot of videos using dyes in my candles, how I use them, the colors that you can see on, uh, across my various candle lines. And while you're at it, feel free to check out any of the other videos on the channel. As always, appreciate you all for being here. Stay tuned for the next video. I've got several planned for the future. Thanks for stopping by and we will see you next time. Thanks.